In this video, I want to talk about the new plugin being released by Dynamic O called the Dynamic Toolbox for Bricks. Now, if you've ever used Dynamic Content for Elementor, a plugin that I covered quite extensively on the channel, you know that brings an awful lot of additional features and fills in a lot of gaps inside Elementor. So it's great to see a lot of the same functions being brought over to Bricks to give us any way to transition it over from Elementor to Bricks you're going to have a lot of those same tools available to you working in pretty much the same fashion. So that's pretty cool to see. Plus the fact you'll have dynamic short codes integrated in, which opens up even more possibilities for having much more dynamic websites. Now, while this video isn't going to cover how to use a lot of these features, I'll cover those in dedicated videos in the coming weeks and months. I want to talk about the key features that I think are noteworthy and also the ones that I will be covering in more detail. So let's quickly jump in and take a look at what those features actually are. So this is broken down into three different sections. You've got elements, form, and loops. Now, elements are basically new elements or widgets you can add into your page. Form is how you can expand the form functionality. And loops, well, they're kind of loops. So in the elements section, some of the key things that I think are really useful, you've got ACF flexible content and ACF front-end forms. So I'm excited to see how that will integrate into my workflow. So I will definitely be covering that in the near future. Plus, you've also got things like the dynamic API, dynamic charts, so we can pull in data from external sources, something as simple as pulling in via the API from something like Pexels to bring in images to far more intermediate and advanced ways of working with APIs. Again, this opens up so many possibilities to expand what you can do with native WordPress. So I'm cool to see how that's all going to work and how I can start to leverage the power that we have there. Dynamic charts. So if you can create a front-end dashboard using the ACF front-end form, and then you can pull in data and you can visualize that in that dashboard, you can create some pretty new, unique looking dashboards for users and clients. So again, this is definitely something I'm excited to check out and really kind of dig into and see how we can make much nicer looking dashboards for our users. But on top of that, there's a bunch of other things like add into your favorites, add into your calendar, add to the Woo sort of wish list. So if you want to create wish lists and you're a WooCommerce user, you'll be able to use this to do that. You can clear your favorites, but you've also got OpenStreetMap, dynamic Google Maps, and got dynamic Google Maps directions. So again, it opens up more possibilities. So if you're creating things like real estate websites or like a, a, an Airbnb kind of site, you want to have directions and things, this is a cool way to do it. Those are some of the key elements that I think are definitely noteworthy. When it comes to the forms, now I've created videos talking about and covering some of the dynamic form options that you have in dynamic content for Elementor. So I'm really excited to see how we can use those inside Bricks itself. Now, Bricks has a lot of really great functions when it comes to the forms, but there's still some areas that we can expand upon. So I'm excited to see how we can start to utilize those. So things like the calculator, confirmation dialog boxes, field conditions, and so on. Field conditions is one of those areas that I think is really useful because we can create advanced forms and then we can use those conditions to show and hide data and do a lot of other things. Again, I've covered this in its own dedicated video when it comes to Elementor. So I'm interested to see how this will all work when it comes to Bricks as well. But there's a ton of options here like regex patterns, international phone numbers, favorites actions, and so on. And then inside the loops, we've got the favorites function. So again, there are so many useful features inside you. And if you're transitioning over from Elementor and you still want to utilize these, you've got these in your workflow, this just means you can do just that. So I'm excited to see how I can start to use these new tools inside Bricks itself. Coming over from someone that used a lot of these in various different projects in Elementor, I'm excited to see how I can start to use those inside Bricks. And if you are a user, let me know in the comment section down below, have you transitioned over to Bricks? And is this something you're gonna grab and you're gonna start utilizing those tools? I'd love to know, drop a comment down below. All applicable links are in the description down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts coming to you from Croatia. And until next time, take care.